Hi guys! In this video we'll be looking at gravitational potential energy. Gravitational potential energy in a uniform field. Gravitational potential energy in a radial field. And we'll finish with the summary. We're going to define a new type of potential energy called gravitational potential energy. Recall that when an elastic band is stretched, it stores energy as elastic potential energy. So as we stretch this band with our thumb, work is done on the band. And this work done is stored within the band as elastic potential energy. This potential energy turns into kinetic energy when the elastic band is suddenly released. After the elastic band has been released, elastic potential energy turns into kinetic energy. And we can tell this because the band now has a velocity, which means it must have some kinetic energy. In a similar way, two objects can store energy as gravitational potential energy between them. So these two masses can store a certain amount of gravitational potential energy between them. Consider raising an object on Earth from the ground to a height. Initially, this cardboard box is on the ground, and sometime later, it's been raised to a certain height, h. As the object moves away from the ground, work has to be done against the gravitational force on it. So for our object on the ground, there's a certain gravitational force, fg, acting on it towards the ground. And in order to lift this box to height h, work must be done against the gravitational force. This work done is stored as gravitational potential energy between the object and the Earth. So the work that is done on the box in order to lift it up is stored as gravitational potential energy, which we're going to call GPE. If the object is released from its height, this gravitational potential energy will be converted to kinetic energy as the gravitational force pulls the object towards the ground. So gravitational potential energy is converted to kinetic energy and the box will then move with a certain velocity towards the Earth. When an object is brought into a gravitational field from infinity or a point outside the field, work is done on it by the gravitational force. So here's an asteroid which is at a distance of infinity outside the field. And we bring it to a point inside the field. And as it's brought inside the field, work is being done on it by the gravitational force. And that's because we're moving in the same direction as Fg, towards the Earth. Any pair of objects that exert gravitational forces on one another have gravitational potential energy. The gravitational potential energy of an object at a point in a gravitational field is the work done to bring that object from infinity to that point in the gravitational field. So bringing this object from position at infinity to a point inside the field will lead to a certain amount of gravitational potential energy being stored due to the fact that there's a gravitational force on the object. An object's gravitational potential energy is always negative this is because the gravitational force is an attractive force that does work on the object to bring it in. So the gravitational force is always going to be acting towards the source of the field. And because this is always an attractive force, work must be done on the object by the field. And therefore, the gravitational potential energy is negative. Now we're going to look at gravitational potential energy in a uniform field. We're often more interested in the change in an object's gravitational potential energy than we are in its present gravitational potential energy. Let's think about the example of an apple falling from a tree. We're not interested in the potential energy at this point on the tree. But what we are interested in is how it changes as the apple falls off the tree. When an object changes height in a uniform gravitational field, its gravitational potential energy changes also. So here's an example of a uniform gravitational field. And as an apple changes height in the gravitational field, it's going to experience a change in gravitational potential energy. We can express the change in gravitational potential energy in terms of the object's mass and change of height. The change of gravitational potential energy, which we're going to call delta E subscript P, is equal to the mass of the object in the field times the gravitational field strength times the change in height delta h. 
This expression is valid near the surface of the Earth, where the gravitational field strength is constant. So remember that near the surface of the Earth, the gravitational field strength G has a constant value of 9.81 newtons per kilogram. For example, if a 0.5 kilogram apple falls to the ground from a height of 2 metres above the ground, we can find its change in potential energy. So the mass of the apple is 0.5 kilograms, and it's fallen from a height of 2 metres. So we're going to say that delta H is equal to minus 2 metres, and we want to find the change in potential energy. So we use our formula for delta EP, which is that it's equal to m times g times delta H, and substitute in the values, which is 0.5 kilograms times 9.81 newtons per kilogram times minus 2 meters. And we find that delta EP is equal to minus 9.81 joules, which is equal to minus 9.8 joules to two significant figures. So why did we give the height a negative sign? Well, the negative sign shows that getting closer to the source of any gravitational field causes an object to lose gravitational potential energy. So as this apple gets closer to the Earth, we know that it's going to lose gravitational potential energy. We can also think of this as gaining negative potential energy. So when an object is at infinity, it's going to have zero gravitational potential energy. And when it's moved to a point in the field, it's going to have gained some negative potential energy. If an object were instead raised to an increased height, it would gain positive gravitational potential energy. So when this box is raised from the ground to a certain height, we take its change in height to be positive, And we say that it has gained positive gravitational potential energy. Now let's look at gravitational potential energy in a radial field. A spherical or point mass will create a radial gravitational field. And here are examples of the field lines for these radial gravitational fields, created by a spherical mass or a point mass. We can express the gravitational potential energy between two objects with radial gravitational fields in terms of their masses and the separation between their centres. So the gravitational potential energy between two objects EP is equal to minus the gravitational constant G times the mass of one object, M1, times the mass of another object, M2, divided by the distance between their centres. Far away enough, any object can be approximated to a point mass for which this expression applies. So if we look far away from a whale, we can approximate it as having a radial field pattern, like the one for a point mass. For example, find the gravitational potential energy between the Earth of mass 6.0 times 10 to the 24 kilograms and the Moon of mass 7.3 times 10 to the 22 kilograms if the separation of their centres is 4.7 times 10 to the 7 metres. So the separation of their centres are is 4.7 times 10 to the 7 metres. And the mass of the Earth we'll call M1 is 6.0 times 10 to the 24 kilograms, and m2 is 7.3 times 10 to the 22 kilograms. And we want to find the gravitational potential energy. So we use our formula for gravitational potential energy of a point mass, which is that it's equal to minus the gravitational constant times m1 times m2 divided by the separation of centres r. And so let's substitute in the values we've been given. We know that the gravitational constant is a constant value, and we've been told what m1 and m2 are. m1 is the Earth's mass of 6.0 times 10 to the 24 kilograms, and the Moon's mass is m2, which is 7.3 times 10 to the 22 kilograms. We divide all of this by the separation between the centres, which is 4.7 times 10 to the 7 metres. And if we carry out this calculation, we find that the gravitational potential energy is minus 6.2158 times 10 to the 29 joules, which is equal to minus 6.2 times 10 to the 29 joules to two significant figures. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you're looking for an amazing A-level physics resource, 
Join me today in my series of engaging bite-sized video tutorials. Just click the snap revised smiley face and together let's make A-level physics a walk in the park.